So, this is late today. I had a bunch of shit I had to take care of in the morning. Partially related to the fact that I'm uh, really pushing hard to try and get, like, a main job. Because this isn't paying the bills like I need it to. And my graphics slash web slash other stuff um, hasn't really been thick enough lately. So... Uh, if you decide that you want uh, some graphics, hit me up, whatever. But um, that's the somewhat baddish news, because I've been, that, like that's why I've been sort of silent on um, on Twitter today. I've been sort of really pushing to get something more mainstream for now, anyway. But um, the other news, uh, if, if you're interested in reading about how I'm being scammed on this car right now, because I, I thought I would be able to, to solve that problem like a long time ago, but apparently this, this fucking cunt just really wants to uh, make, make things difficult. So if you want to figure out how, that, uh, how that's going for me, feel free to check out uh, my website. It's one of the first link that, links that's available there, and I'll include a link in the description. Um, but that's part of the reason that I've been so distracted lately is because I've really got to push for other stuff since this car situation and a bunch of other things uh, are threatening my ability to eat. So um, with all that in mind, uh, this week is the first episode of Season 2 of the weekly hellscape and uh, for those of you who don't know I'll be doing 10 episode seasons with a new song every season um, also season 2 will be the first season to premiere um, on activist post activist post has agreed to let me cross post uh, my episodes to their to their site just like a few other podcasters do and I am happy to do so because uh, for those of you who don't know, I've been uh, relying on them among several other sources pretty heavily for uh, quite a while now for my personal news intake. And I also auto-tweet them on Twitter. So it's a pretty symbiotic relationship. And I'm looking forward to working with these guys. Uh, also, um, this season's uh, song is The Story That Should Never Be Told by Zachary Larmer, and uh, the link to that will be in the description as well. It's a similar vibe to the last one, only a little bit more of the hard-edged, kind of screamy stuff, but uh, I like how it's a song like fighting the old powers, because make no mistake, my particular message here is not sarcastic. I don't I don't mean to, to, to hijack any sort of discussion of demons. I really think that, like, the same things that people would have considered demons in the past are what's in charge of everything now, and that's why we're in this fucking situation. People who've w listened to this show for a while know why, but for those of you who are new here from the Activist Post and other, uh, other places this show might be syndicated to, which you can hit me up if you want my show syndicated to your platform, um, this is the Weekly Hellscape. It's a uh, roundup of the worst of the worst that uh, I can find um, relating to U.S. politics and government and the world government at large that's being built with its hegemony. So, if you want to know how evil, how truly sick this place is, feel free to check in every Saturday for now until I can uh, get more stable income from this. Um, every Saturday for now, uh, on activist post, jeremiahharding.com, Google Play, TuneIn, or Stitcher for your latest information on exactly how fucking hellish everything is. With that being said, we've got Facebook partnering with Patriot Act authors. 
We've got U.S. being terrorists in Afghanistan, having killed more civilians than terrorists for the first several months of 2019. And uh, plenty more. The technocratic super state is advancing, and I'm here to show you all of their secrets. Welcome to the Weekly Hellscape. For those of you who don't already know, which I've probably said twice already in this fucking recording, um, this show does its thing by having good news in the beginning so that you can, like, get all nice and nestled in and fucking... Then I hit you with the bad stuff, and it's usually an extremely overwhelming amount of the latter and not much of the former. So with all that in mind... The first piece of good news is that Massachusetts has decided that local police can't ping your phone to track its location without a warrant. From the Electronic Freedom Foundation, there's heartening news for our location privacy out of Massachusetts this week. The Supreme Judicial Court, the state's highest court, ruled that police access to real-time cell phone location data whether it comes from a phone company or from technology like a cell site simulator, intrudes on a person's reasonable expectation of privacy. Absent exigent circumstances, the court held the police must get a warrant. Uh, That's from EFF.org. The link is in the description. So, while the Fourth Amendment is being more protected, the First got a victory too, when a federal judge struck down a Texas anti-BDS law from Common Dreams, quote, in a decision hailed as a, quote, landmark victory for the First Amendment, a federal judge on Thursday struck down a Texas law requiring government contractors to sign a pledge vowing not to participate in the pro-Palestinian boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. That's from Common Dreams. Uh, link is in the description. Which, yeah, that's very good news. I've, I've talked before... Uh, both here and elsewhere, about the fact that the First Amendment is severely uh, impeded when people can't uh, avoid um, being pro-Israel or pro-U.S. or pro, you know, I mean, it's the same mentality as not being pro, like, Al-Qaeda or ISIS. You shouldn't have to support an organization, and every time you have to support an organization that becomes tyranny. And so it's, it's, it's good news. It, uh, whether you agree with um, the anti-BDS stuff or not, um, you should know that your freedom is at stake every time they restrict speech. If you can't talk about it, you can't do shit either. So that's good news also. T.I. and Scrap De Leon worked with Lithonia, Georgia's New Missionary Baptist, New Birth Missionary Baptist Church to bail out 23 nonviolent offenders from jail 
and give them the tools necessary to avoid recidivism. From HuffPo, each of the recipients has been paired with a mentor for weekly check-ins, and the church has set aside money to open college funds for the recipient's children. New Birth Missionary Baptist Church started raising funds for the bail program at the start of Lent, a 40-day period of fasting and reflection that leads up to Easter, the day that Christians believe Jesus Christ was resurrected. The church's initial goal was to raise $40,000. It ended up raising about one hundred twenty grand. So, uh, that's good. That's, uh, that's very good. Um... And releasing scholarship funds for all the children of released inmates breaks the cycle of crime often called a school-to-prison pipeline. So, I am definitely supportive of it. Um, the fact is that a lot of people growing up without parents don't have a way to pay for the education necessary to make it in society, or at least feel like they can make it in society with this. If you don't have a degree, you can't succeed mentality that's pounded into them with, like, high school education and shit. So, it's very good. I hope to see more of this very soon. And in a similar victory, as reported in a piece by Waking Times, entitled More Than 50,000 Marijuana Convictions in Los Angeles Will Be Automatically Wiped Clean. It highlights the results of a new proposition passed which would expunge low-level felonies from someone's record. L.A. and San Joaquin County are the latest to implement it. From Waking Times, quote, The latest and largest metroplex to take on this issue is Los Angeles, where officials from two counties are putting plans in place to reverse over 54,000 prior convictions. Code for America, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping the government to use technology in the service of the citizenry, will be employing an algorithm to quickly identify qualified beneficiaries and automatically remove their convictions. So, a lot of good is happening. But, to be clear, a lot of bad is as well. Let's hit it. We'll start off light. The EFF had a long-running lawsuit against the NSA dismissed by a judge who cited threats to security from secrecy breaches. From the Electronic Freedom Foundation, EFF's case challenging NSA spying Jewel versus NSA has come further than any case trying to end the government's mass surveillance programs. Our our clients have survived multiple efforts by the government to end the case, and they continue to push for their day in court. As a result, we're no stranger to overcoming legal obstacles thrown our way. The latest obstacle came Thursday when the court hearing, our long-running case challenged the N challenging the NSA spying, ruled that the lawsuit should be dismissed on account of the government's argument that to proceed further would jeopardize national security. Although we are disappointed that the case was dismissed on the basis of the government's state, aid, state secrecy arguments, we are not surprised. The Justice Department insists that our legal fight against the spying is bound by a catch-22. No one can sue unless the court first demonstrates that they were certainly touched by the vast surveillance mechanism of the NSA. But the government argued successfully, the court cannot decide whether any particular person's email, web searches, social media, or phone calls were touched by the surveillance unless the government admits it. Which, of course, it will not do. <laughs> so, don't you love that? You have to submit to warrantless searches. I mean, we'll be getting into that a little bit later. Because, you know, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear or whatever. So if you have something like that, whatever. Um, and <laughs> they, they can just say, we keep secrets and therefore you can't know whether or not we're doing what we're saying. Like, there's no way to subpoena the NSA for this information. And even if there was... I'm sure they'd find a different way to fucking, you know, weasel their way out of it. I mean, Snowden came out with his revelations and pretty much fucking proved it. And all we need to do is, like, that part in Vault 7, and we already know that the NSA and CIA are both spying domestically. So, <laughs> they already know. They already fucking get it, and they're still not doing it. They're still not fucking, like being held to account because they don't have to be 
Like the, the, the government. They're not here to help. So while the NSA guaranteeably spies on people, and while it's almost certain that the NSA spied on their client, they can't sue the NSA unless they can prove it happened. And that would involve accessing records only accessible if they're being sued. All of this happens while airports become training grounds for facial recognition AI. From Zero Hedge, the Department of Homeland Security says that facial recognition technology will be used on 97% of passengers departing in the U.S. by 2023. Already deployed in 17 international airports, including Atlanta, New York City, Boston, San Jose, Chicago, and two airports in Houston, DHS systems will photograph and scan passengers at their departure gate, cross-referencing their face against the library face images from visa and passport applications as well as those taken by border agents when foreigners enter the country. So... <laughs> They, uh, they're scanning your face at the airport, and they're also probably going to use it as your new boarding pass. I don't know if you guys have been listening for a while, but for those of you who have, you'll know that, the, uh, that, that facial recognition is being used as a way to access hotels, airports, everything. They also have opportunity zones where they're fucking using their facial recognition software to, uh, to, to, to catch potential criminals, even though the fucking potential criminals that they're catching um, are probably just people using the public Wi-Fi that they honey-potted into the areas. <sighs> uh, it's so frustrating. And you want to be double frustrated? Uh, Mackenzie Fiega noticed uh, use of this as a boarding method, saying, I just boarded an international jet blue flight. This was on Twitter. Instead of scanning my boarding pass or handing over my passport, I looked into a camera before being allowed on the jet bridge. Did facial recognition replace boarding passes unbeknownst to me? Did I consent to this? She has an entire tweet thread on it. Um, jet blue responded to her. With a we're with a standard like we're sorry you feel that way thing, which <laughs> back when he was still much more reasonable than he is now, Stefan Molyneux did a great video on what he called bean apps, which were uh, bullshit non apologies, and uh, that's what one of those is. They're just we're we're so I'm so sorry you feel that way. I feel such deep sorrow that your feelings are that way. Not that I did anything wrong. Not that I fucked over your privacy or. <laughs> compared it against a database that you didn't consent to no i'm sorry about your feelings bullshit fuck you eat shit uh jet blue responded to her with a standard we're sorry for your feel you feel that way telling her she can opt out even though they didn't tell her that before it happened but in an exchange which followed they said they matched faces against a US border patrol and customs database and an AI scans it and opens the gate no info on how they got her picture so do you want to fly be prepared for a future not only of tracking but of your face following you after airports to do so and add to that from activist post the GAO has confirmed inaccuracy and privacy violations in the fa uh, FBI's use of facial recognition data. Until FBI officials can assure themselves that the data they receive from external partners are reasonably accurate and reliable, it is unclear whether such agreements are beneficial to the FBI, whether the investment of public resources is justified, and whether photos of innocent people are unnecessarily included as investigative leads. And, you know, the Government Accountability Office isn't going to get anywhere with this. Of course, they're fucking susceptible to flaw. The FBI knows this, and they probably use it anyway because they can Al Capone people and get, get them on other bullshit while they're fucking in the system anyway. It's so, it's so frustrating. They can operate in complete secrecy about their spying um, and, and, and be completely immune to everything about it. And we just have to sit here and take the fact that they're passively absorbing a shit ton of information about us, enough to control us in very severe and egregious ways, and the, the, 
offices that are supposed to hold them accountable say, uh, we don't re- really think that these are that effective. And then the FBI can just say, yeah, uh, y- you can kiss our ass because this is happening anyway. Ugh, but yeah, let's put this shit everywhere and make sure it's in all public places and required for transactions. Not going to end poorly at all. Except, in like in the other article linked here, facial recognition software led to someone's arrest for stealing from an Apple store when he didn't do it. Like, apparently they fucking just, like, their Apple fucking facial recognition bullshit looked at him and said, this is the guy. And, and when they looked at actual security cam footage that wasn't AI, it said, th- th- they said... He looked nothing like the actual suspect. It's fucking exhausting. And also doesn't help that it's 4.30 where I am right now, and I'm, like, already exhausted from the day of research and the day of looking for work and shit. So I'm tired anyway, but this would exhaust me under normal circumstances. Um. (laughs) So he's suing now. And while we're talking about this kind of technocracy, the government-to-Facebook pipeline is wider than ever, the most recent hire being an author of the Patriot Act. From Common Dreams, social media giant Facebook made a major hire Monday, bringing on lawyer Jennifer Newstead as the company's general counsel, a move that generated criticism due to Newstead's work on two decades ago drafting the Patriot Act. The company announced the hire by citing Newstead's extensive work in government. Most recently, Newstead acted as the legal advisor for the State Department. During her time in the Bush administration, Newstead was known for being the day-to-day manager of the Patriot Act in Congress, according to torture memo memo author John Yu. Quote, Jennifer is a seasoned leader whose global perspective and experience will help us fulfill our mission. Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg said in a statement, you gotta wonder what their fucking mission is. Newstead referred to Facebook's role in the public discourse in a statement released by the company. Quote, Facebook's products play an important role in societies around the world, said Newstead. I am looking forward to working with the team and outside experts and regulators on a range of legal issues as we seek to uphold our responsibilities and shared values. That's on Common Dreams. Link is in the description. (laughs) Meanwhile, Facebook is being used by law enforcement to create fake accounts in violation of policy. From the Mind Unleashed... Quote, local, state, and federal law enforcement are refusing to comply with Facebook's policy against law enforcement creating fake social media accounts. A new report by The Guardian details how U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement has violated Facebook policy by creating fake social media accounts connected to a fake university created to identify illegal immigrants. ICE agents created profiles of individuals alleged to have attended the fictional University of Farmington as part of their attempt to ensnare students in an immigration scam. More than 600 students, most of whom were Indian citizens, were indicted in the federal government's operation. A Facebook representative told The Guardian that law enforcement are subject to the same policies that require users to use their real name on Facebook. Quote, operating fake accounts is not allowed, and we will act on any violating accounts, the representative said. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe you will. Maybe. <laughs> I, I just, I have such a hard time believing that because Facebook is a CIA joint that, <laughs> I mean, pretty much, that, uh, that has a government to Facebook pipeline that just can't stop getting government officials to uh, work for them. So I can't, I can't fathom Facebook deciding, hey, you know what's a good idea? Let's, um, let's, let's cancel the accounts of the officers that are using these accounts to catch criminals. 
I think that's mostly just a PR move because Facebook knows damn well this is happening and has damn zero they plan on doing about it. I, I, I can't picture it any different than that. Uh, but that immigration scam is a good seg into today's international news. Let's start with a pioneer of seasteading potentially facing the Thai death penalty for building his home in waters they claim to own. From CNN, quote, an American Bitcoin trader and his girlfriend could face the death penalty after they were accused of threatening Thailand's sovereignty by building an, and living in a sea home off the coast of Phuket. Chad Elwartowski and his partner Nadia Suprani, uh, Tebdet, have fled their home built atop a platform around 12 miles off the coast of Phuket and gone into hiding after authorities revoked the American's visa. He had promoted seasteads on social media and claimed his home did not fall under the sovereignty of any country, which Thai authorities have said is untrue. He repeated the claim on Thursday, writing the home is, quote, outside of Thailand territorial waters. The couple could face imprisonment or the death penalty under the country's Immigration Act, but authorities told CNN if they are unaware, or sorry, that they are unaware if the pair are still in the country or its waters. <clears throat> so, I, I mean, I can't say I didn't see this coming, but it's still terrible for them. I, I, I hope they can find a country which won't extradite them to Thailand, ha tip to Monica Perez and Skeptical Deist for the heads up. But, I mean, I, 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 was, I was ringing alarm bells on this on Facebook and on Twitter for a while there because all my friends were being like, you know, oh, well, let's just go seastead. We can seastead. Nobody owns certain parts of water. Well, Bullshit. Anybody in government can arbitrarily dictate their borders outside of whatever they need to in order to get your fucking shit. That's what government does. It spreads around. It gets your fucking shit. So just remember that. If, if you really want uh, freedom, you have to end government. It, it's, 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 it's not a middle ground. There is no fucking, like, halfway here. Because any government can just annex you if they want. That's how it fucking works. I don't know why people don't get that. Because um, even if they weren't in Thai's, Th Thailand's uh, uh, water, they fucking could have been tomorrow. Just remember that, all right? There is no easy way out. You can't just go build a platform somewhere in the middle of the ocean and expect all governments to leave you alone. Uh, and doing it alone, especially without, like, a bunch of people around you to help you defend your place, no strength in numbers, no nothing, it's a, it's a poor choice. And... While that happens, the U.S. has threatened to veto a U.N. resolution barring using rape as a weapon of war because the Trump administration is opposed to language they feel is condoning of abortion and trans people. From the Mind Unleashed, <laughs> it's just, you know, I mean, you read, a, head, you, you read a, a, a byline like that and you're fucking, if you're not extremely angry, I, I don't know what to say man um so this is from the mind unleashed quote u.s officials are reportedly threatening to veto a united nations security council resolution seeking to end the use of rape as a weapon of war over its language on reproductive health According to The Guardian, which first reported on U.S. opposition to the measure late Monday, Trump officials are objecting to the resolution's, quote, language on victim support from family planning clinics. In recent months, the Trump administration has taken a hard line, refusing to agree to any U.N. documents that refer to sexual or reproductive health, on grounds that such language implies support for abortions. The Guardian reported, it has also opposed the use of the word, quote, gender, seeing it as a cover for liberal promotion of transgender rights. Oh, man. 
It used words I didn't like. We still need to be able to rape people. <laughs> it's like dealing with fucking children. Only they're not children. They're adults. Playing to their fucking baits. <laughs> so, so great. Rape people is part of war because trans people and abortion. How noble. Meanwhile... Numbers released Thursday have confirmed that in the first three months of 2019, the U.S. and allies have killed more civilians than Taliban and other terrorists in Afghanistan. From the Free Thought Project, quote, In the first quarter of 2019, pro-government forces were responsible for the deaths of 305 civilians while insurgents killed only 227. The leading causes of civilian deaths were in the air, or sorry, were airstrikes, 145 fatalities and ground search operations primarily carried out by U.S.-backed Afghan forces, 72 of them. Women and children comprised half of civilian casualties from aerial operations while with international forces responsible for the vast majority of these. Overall, 581 civilians were killed and 1,192 wounded, representing a 23% decrease in overall casualties on the same quarter last year. The numbers are apparently so disturbing that UN officials are now calling for an investigation into the killings. And meanwhile, the CIA, whose Operation Cyclone, this is my reporting, would form the basis for much radicalism today, has former director Mike Pompeo on record saying, quote, I was the CIA director. We lied. We cheated. We stole. It's, it was like we had entire training courses. Oh, man. I, I don't think this is just the CIA. I, I think this is all of them. They're all trained in fucking deception. I mean, he said it in contrast to a West Point motto that says that you know don't lie or fucking something and don't tolerate anybody who will but we all know that the people in the military like the army included are fucking like they lie a lot that's how they justify a shit ton of their action i don't know and all this happens while we're 72 trillion dollars in total american debt 22 of it to other countries <sighs> See, and th this is why I have this show. Because I, I, I really want people to know that this isn't sane. This isn't how things should be. We shouldn't have these people of, these, these, these group of liars, cheaters, and fucking murderers fucking th you know ministry wrote a song about them it's thieves thieves and liars <laughs> hypocrites and bastards i like this is why i have this show to expose these people so if you obviously have any stories you want to include feel free uh Oh man, something to think about while I cover this stuff more, much more local to this place. Let's start the fuck the police segment of the show. While people are admitting to evil, let's talk about a top Chicago cop admitting cops look the other way when fellow cops commit crime. Quote, do I think there might be officers that look the other way? Yeah, I do. There are a lot of reasons why cops might not report misconduct. If they see their partner engage in misconduct, they may look the other way. That's on Chicago Sun-Times. And then he goes on to, like, justify it, like... Like he's not going to attack entire departments, even though there are obvious corrup corruption scandals. Right now, he could talk about... Like, Broward. We're going to go over another Broward case. Or like that Houston Police Department, which fucking, like, lied about a shit ton of people. And, 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 like, so many cases are being thrown out because of it. Like, shit. I don't know how people can trust the police anymore. But I want what they're smoking. Maybe not, though. I don't respond very well to most drugs anymore. 
I don't know. Shit is bad. Um, but <laughs> keep that in mind while I read these other stories, starting with a kid who did zero wrong, and when cops threatened to arrest him, ran. They threw the nine-year-old to the ground, who then soiled himself and booked him, only to later release him. One has to wonder if the only reason they did was that his mom used to be a cop. You can click that link in the description. You can click it and watch them throw around this tiny little boy. Fucking, and he didn't break the law. He didn't harm anyone. He was just running, and they arrested him for it. Pretty sad and pathetic that these fucking pigs still act like they're the dividing line between humanity and chaos when they keep on acting so much the opposite. This kid has every reason to be afraid, too. Cops are now being given DHS grants for drones to expand the surveillance state even more. I have a link there to an article about how <laughs> cops are going to have to be trained, but afterwards, they'll be able to use drones as a part of their fucking regular law enforcement habits. And they say they're just going to throw out bunk data. Sure, yeah, I believe that. I believe you're going to throw out your bunk data you're going to get rid of anything that isn't relevant to cases after 180 days. I believe that, and I also literally have the Chaos Emeralds. They're right here. I'm going to use them, I promise. You might want to open fire at any point, officer. Fucking... Yeah, we're just going to get rid of any information that we don't need instead of, you know, admitting that it'll probably be maintained for a really long time, and if not forever. Um, you know, that is if humanity doesn't nuke itself first, because cops don't like to get rid of information they could possibly use to incriminate people. Fuck. <laughs> and they're being allowed to drive mobile blood-testing vans uh, around to force blood draws for substances anytime, anywhere. It's like a rape van, only they fuck you with a needle and then take your blood without your consent. They'll strap you down. Like, have you ever seen a forced blood draw video? It's intense. They strap you down. They hold you down like fucking frat boys about to rape a chick, and then they stick a thing in your arm and take your property, your blood. They, 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 they take your DNA. They take whatever they want, whenever they want. It's a piece of you, doesn't matter. You, you, you earned it, doesn't matter. They will literally suck your blood out of your body. And now they got a convenient, handy way to do it in the form of a fucking blood-sucking van. Only instead of it going to the Red Cross, it's going to a bunch of useless fucking pigs with nothing better to do than harass people like this. I'm saying a lot of this in rant format with my eyes closed, just trying to stop from being so exhausted, but it's not working. Um, <laughs> which makes these next stories even worse. Worse, like a diabetic mom who went into shock and got into a car crash, being hurt by police because they mistook her condition for being drug abuse. She needed a drug. She needed insulin. She needed some, like, thing to spike her blood sugar so that she didn't fucking die. And instead, the cops manhandled her, handcuffed her, and then threw her inside a car to be processed for the egregious crime of causing damage to some uninsured, or sorry, some totally insured property. It's stunning. We can't just fucking handle these things on our own anymore, if we ever could. Or, or like a 4 foot 11 inch grandma who refused a warrantless search, being thrown outside and then thrown at a concrete wall while they illegally searched her place and denied her medical care, causing a hernia which put her in surgery and out of work for three months. The officers have faced no punishment. 
Jesus. Oh, man. I'm just so fucking done. <laughs> and she was thrown at a concrete wall. They Okay, so the cop's reason was that he felt like he was being attacked when his finger was pinched. His finger was pinched. Well, she pinched my finger. So I, 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 I brutally threw at a concrete wall at, like after throwing her out of her house. You know, that that's the appropriate response for an officer of the fucking law. <sighs> but anyway... Then the same police department being Broward who bashed that kid's face into pavement last week, the one that left like a pool of blood for days, the one I talked about when I, uh, when, when I ran my last show, that police department uh, was guilty of yet another offense um, when they attacked a man who was handcuffed to a hospital bed. They... They brought him in for a, quote, wellness check. And then how best to perform a wellness check than when he starts shouting that he doesn't want to be here, punch him in the face a few times. Because cops are just sadistic little fucking thugs, and this one even thought he could totally get away with it. This one even thought he could fucking just walk, be one of those cops the other one talked about when they talked about like uh, looking the other way because guess the fuck what huh um w when he started to talk about it he pointed to this camera this fucking body cam that he left propped up right so he referenced the fact that the whole thing was caught on camera and he said that he would, you know, not face anything about it. And, you know, he probably even fucking won't. Because this is the way cops operate. Those fucking, like, ads for that dumb shit game. This is how mafia works. No, this is how cops work. They just punch whoever they want and get away with it. With, for the most part. Not, like, all. There are some good cases. Um, but those good cases seem to me... To be like pacification for the fact that we live in a police state. Like, hey, this isn't total tyranny. Look, these people were charged and convicted. Yeah, because like they pissed off the wrong cops. So, or, or, or they were about to roll on some cops or whatever. So they needed to shut this cop up or get him off their case, you know? So, so that cop went away. But it's, it's, it's never like, you know, oh, they did something that anybody else would do and get, like, fucked up for. Anyway, I'm getting lost in the weeds on that story. Beating up people handcuffed to anything uh, fucks with me. I wonder why. And in other news, a man is now suing Phoenix, Arizona police after they fired six bullets into his car and unleashed a dog to shred him for a minute after they caught up because he started to drive away when they pulled a gun on him for zero reason. The victim is the only one serving time, three years of it, and the officer is back on duty. Watch the video. I included a link in the description. Watch the video. Because they saw, like a razor blade, and a stun gun, which are both legal to carry. They saw these things on his passenger seat, and they told him to step out of the fucking car because he was sleeping in his car. At least these cops didn't execute him like those people did the fucking Taco Bell parking lot guy. But this guy was sleeping in his car. They wake him up, um, <laughs> and, 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 He's obviously not in a state to, to be fucked with in an extreme way. And he obviously looks scared, tense, nervous. And you can look at him. <laughs> and all he does is roll up his window so that, you know, he can enact his legal right to not have his car searched. I'm guessing he would have locked it on his way out, too. You're allowed to do that. Watch the Flex Your Rights video on it. And 
the cop pulled his gun on him and said, I will put a... B-, and, like, that was the beginning of a sentence. I will put a bullet in you, I swear to God. Something like that. That's what he was going to say. And so the guy starts driving off, reasonably. And a bullet grazes his neck. He's not, like, in the worst condition. But a bullet grazes his neck from a gun that never should have been fired or drawn or pointed at him. And in any other circumstance, this would be considered aggravated assault on the part of the cop. But because this is a cop, he'll get away with it. Don't worry. Um, and finally, more cops mistook an innocent New Haven, Connecticut couple for armed robbers, blocked their car, and tried to execute them. From the Free Thought Project, Stephanie Washington, 22, was hospitalized last week after two trigger-happy cops opened fire on her and her boyfriend, Paul Witherspoon, 21. According to police, Officer Devin Eaton and Yelp Police Officer Terrence Pollock were responding to reports of a robbery at a nearby gas station when they stopped the vehicle in which Washington was a passenger. In only seconds, both officers jumped out of the vehicles and began shooting at this innocent couple. After they shot Washington, they, re- they realized the couple was unarmed and hadn't done anything wrong. Witherspoon's uncle told reporters that there was an argument at the gas station, but no attempted robbery. His comments were backed up by the fact that no charges were filed against either of the vehicle's occupants. So there you have it. They can scan you with inefficient tools, getting better by the day for a government which lies, cheats, and steals, and looks the other way when officers commit crimes. Also, they can crank up the debt with massive for-profit schemes like a war on terror where they're the biggest terror threat. Just another day in the hellscape. And this is why I started this show. This is why this show is gaining as much traction as it is. This is why people are listening. This is why people want it. Because guess the fuck what? Everybody knows the demons are there. They just don't want to be called crazy for pointing it out. It's like Constantine. They're everywhere. And eventually, after her telling herself they didn't exist for a long enough time, she stopped seeing them. But that doesn't mean they weren't there. That just means she couldn't see them. Now, I'm not saying everybody should just stare into the abyss all the fucking time, but guess what? If you don't at least take a peek every now and then, it's going to swallow you without you even having to look. But anyway, I will see you all next week with a brand new episode of the Weekly Hellscape, Season 2, Episode 2, where we will take on whatever the fuck comes out of this hell mouth and crawls onto our plane of being. It's going to be a fucking wild ride if I can keep it going. If you appreciate what I'm doing, feel free to support it with any of the support links in the bottom or top of the description. Feel free to check out the artist behind the Season 2 song, check out their band camp, and feel free to support any of the projects involved here. Because the only way we can get out is by helping those who truly, truly work against this system. Who try to fight against the cogs of the machine, and stop being one themselves. And thank you to Activist Post for being the first site to want to syndicate this, uh, this, this show as well. I hope to uh, have a long and lasting partnership with this site, uh, as they have done a significant amount to make my work easier uh, in looking up a lot of the evil that goes on in the world. So feel free to check them out and feel free to watch this show on either there, my YouTube, when it uh, gets uh, uploaded there, or the podcast outlets that this is on, because there are so many demons and so little time. This has been the Weekly Hellscape. See you in hell.